What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate, reverse rants, no hate. So, I saw a short clip of Errol Spence being, he was in the hospital being wheeled around like he just came from, said he just came from cataract surgery. Now, cataract surgery, you know he had a detached retina, and with cataract surgery, okay, it can actually cause a detached retina. So he's actually had detached retina surgery and cataract surgery already, which means it's not a, just a Terrence Crawford thing. Um, it just may not be worth Errol Spence continuing to box against anyone because he can really lose sight in that eye. Now, if that's a risk he's willing to take, then, you know, that's solely up to him. But there's a such thing as having one fight too many. And to risk losing your eye, your sight, just for the sake of the roar of the crowd and wanting to be able to say, I got even with the guy that beat me in this situation. I mean, that's really something that you have to think you know, like, be smart about. If he, for one, the fight's going to be at 147, okay, he's the one that said he wanted the rematch, but at 154. Now, I haven't heard him make any mis um, excuses. Now, in that clip, I did hear him say, that's why, like, why you think he was able to hit me with so many jabs. So, in other words, the vision to that eye wasn't what it should have been for whatever, you know, for whatever it was, you know, um, I'm going to say this, you know, bottom line, I'm not even going to allude to anything other, like I said, I said he didn't look right in that fight and whatever was wrong, I wasn't trying to assume what it was. I just plain and simple. And I will always say, like, he just didn't look just right in that fight. And I will say, if you go into a fight and you have things wrong with you, that will affect your performance. That will be in your mind. Like, you know you have a certain situation. And a lot of times a fighter will fight desperate instead of smart because, you know, they know something's wrong. Now, I don't know what was going through his head. And I know what he said at the post-fight conference. And I know what he said, you know, in that short clip. And my thing is this. I'm not going into detail. And, and, and like I said, I will never, I have no reason to make an excuse for anyone. If I didn't feel that he didn't look right, I wouldn't have said it. Even if he had full vision and everything, you know, I'm not sitting here telling you. Okay, just to set the record straight. I don't know what would have happened, okay? But I'm not sitting here telling you, oh, if it wasn't for that, he would have definitely won. I don't know that. If, if, if whatever he, if, if, if he was at full strength, like I said, and if he looked, you know, you know I, listen, I, I don't, I don't know what would have happened. Only thing I can go by is what did happen, okay? Now, when I listened to that, it made me think about what Tony Week said, but at the same time, it's not the same thing, which I'm going to get into that because I don't want to do a separate video about it. Okay, now Tony Weeks stopped the fight against this, with this guy with Lawson and um, Ortiz. Let me tell you, he said that basically before the fight that Lawson was diagnosed with having an aneurysm. Okay, not once but twice. However, he was cleared to fight. Now, my thing is, if this man was cleared to fight, that means he should have been okay to go into the ring. Now, if this was a situation where you had some shitty people going, hey, man, I would, you know, hey, I don't think you should, but if you want me to clear you, hey, man, it's up to you. You understand? I don't really, you know, you know, we know Muhammad Ali, according to Freddie Pacheco, that Ali failed his tests. That he actually couldn't follow the finger. Like, he was the simplest part of the test. All he was failing. And they still allowed that fight to go on with Larry Holmes. So, shit does happen. 
fighters, you hear fighters say all the time, and it's true, they fight with injuries all of the time. So it's not like it's it's all oh, because somebody say, hey, look, man, I, I tore my, like, like, remember Shannon Briggs, we know that he tore his bicep, and you can see in the fight, he was, couldn't even use his hand, that, 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 um, his left arm, you know, he was fighting with one hand. It's not an excuse, shit happens, okay? We saw Chris Ariola fight against, you know, Andy Ruiz. Fuck this shoulder. We 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 seen that all of a sudden the output uh, out the punch output wasn't the same. The game plan, the technique, everything, nothing was there anymore. So things do happen, okay. And again, and I'm saying, like I said, I don't make excuses of anybody. I have no reason to. I don't personally care. You know, who wins or whatever. Like it's not personal. Even if I want you to win and you lose, ah, so be it. I don't lose anything. Now, just saying, you know, for Errol Spence. That's a decision he's going to have to make. The man's a multi-millionaire, multiple-time champion. If your health, when your health is at stake, you got to think, what else is there for me to prove? How important is it to you just to say, okay, Crawford beat me and I beat him. Now I'm blind. And it doesn't take a Terrence Crawford. I mean, anybody. So now the fact that having um, cataract surgery can lead to a detached retina. He's in a position where, I mean, he may go in there and wind up getting beat even worse in a rematch. And what happens, right? You think Crawford's not going to target that eye? Of course he is. You think any other fighter won't target that eye? And it's the same eye that he had the surgery on in the first place. And that's why in the thumbnail, you see what I put up there, man. I put, I, 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 you know, it's just a reminder to people. Let's not forget, this is a man that was ejected from a car going, what, whatever his speed was, 100-something miles per hour, and had face surgery and all that before. Now the situation with his eyes. This is where you got to think, you know, your health over wealth. You already got the money you need, you know, and he can, he can, he can be a promoter. There's other things he can do. He can he can open a gym, run a gym. I mean, there's things that he can do where he can still make, you know, really good money and along with the money he's already made. Um and it, and, 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 and 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 it, you know, ignorant people will sit up there, nah man, you should go in there. Okay, yeah, it's not you. You've never been a fighter, you've never had been in that situation. So it's easy to talk about what you should do. Now, if that's what he chooses, that's what he chooses. But the reality of that is, once you choose it, the same way he didn't say anything in the first fight, there's no need to say anything in the second fight. But, you know, the same people talking shit will be the same ones if he lose sight in that eye, all of a sudden now, damn, man, that's fucked up what happened to Earl Spence. Yeah, he, he was a good fighter too, man. Yo, damn, he should have never fought Carl for the second time or blah, 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 or whoever. He should have just retired. So, again, that's something that he has to think about. But, um, hey, man, you know, that that's serious business. You know, um, and believe me, there's plenty of fighters who, if they could do something different, they, you know, as opposed to what they did, oh, they would. They would. I, you know, the younger you are, the more ignorant you are. And you might, you know, your your, your, your arrogance, your ego, or, or having, you know, a lot of heart will make you think and feel, and I know fighters, we're, we're stupid like that. That, fuck that, I ain't, I'm not quitting, we're going to keep going. And then one day, you get older and you're sitting around, blind, slurred speech, something just not right. You know, the wear and tear from boxing, you know, your, your knuckles are actually gone. Your hand like a freaking meatball or whatever. You know, and a lot of people have regrets. And, you know, it is what it is. Now, back on to the Tony Week situation. Look, man, even if that man had two aneurysms or whatever, however it went, he was medically cleared to fight. And I think that even for him to say that, oh, well, that's what people don't know. Okay, how many times does a fighter go into the ring? The referee is not aware that this fighter is, you know, carrying an injury into the ring. And so because they're not aware, 
You understand? They don't they don't step in and stop a fight. Every referee isn't exactly the same. Of course, we know that. But looking at what Tony Weeks did, the guy was missing. It those punches wasn't even landing. But my thing is, if a fighter is injured, why clear him? If, if that fighter, if it's in his best interest to not participate in that fight, why clear him? Okay. And even though Tony Weeks said what he said, it still doesn't excuse him stopping that fight too early because that guy was missing. Now, you guys talk about watching something in slow motion. Watch the punches in slow motion and watch how all those punches miss except for like two. And and so, okay, what was that did, did, did Barroso also have um, aneurysms in his head? And I think Tony Weeks is just using it as an excuse, man. I mean, that that was that was a terrible job, man. You know, same way I say if a fighter pops dirty, why let the fight happen just to two, three weeks later? Oh, we knew three weeks ago that this fighter was dirty, but she let the fight go on anyway. You know, would a referee get worried about that and ever stop a, and, and stop a fight because a guy is punching hard? And he found out that a, that a guy is uh, dirty. Would he would he stop it because of that? Has a referee ever stopped the fight because of that? Because I've never heard a fighter a, a referee say, "Well, this guy failed this test," and I feel like, you know, it may be true that he was on something because he was hitting extremely hard, and I wanted to save the guy. I'm saying, think about it, y'all. That's that's legit. That's a legitimate question. So. You know, it's not like the guy was getting pummeled and he just wasn't responding to shots. No, the, the, the Ortiz was missing those shots. He was li literally missing those shots. Like I said, I saw two connect and about four or five, maybe something like that. Might have been six punches, whatever, between four to six punches, whatever. I know he maybe he threw six all together, but I seen him land two and miss all the other ones. Bottom line is, you know... um, it looks really suspect to me. We saw the same thing happen, you know, with Barroso and Raleigh. Now, all of a sudden, with Lawson and Ortiz, it's the same thing. The same thing. This guy wasn't in danger of, of, of falling or getting hurt at that moment. He was, he was, you know, blocking these shots. So, I'm, I'm, you know, I hear what Tony Weeks is saying, but it's like, okay, but the guy was medically cleared. What did you say in the dressing room? Hey, man, listen, the first time you get punched in the face, I'm going to stop it. Yeah, you, you have to, you can't get hit by any punch. If one land, I'm stopping it because you have aneurysm in your head. Um, uh, you know, like I said, um, the, the guy wasn't getting, wasn't, wasn't taking the beating. And the fact that he was medically cleared, I feel like Tony Weeks is using that as an excuse to, you know, put the fire out that's around him right now because people are like fed up with him. I mean, this isn't the first two times he's made a terrible decision. Tony Weeks, honestly, throughout the years, man, this guy's just been making terrible decisions. So, that being said, you know, what's the purpose? Unless you're fixed and you're under the table. You're unless you're a hey, man. As soon as he look like he's getting his, he's getting some shots off. Stop it. If this isn't a fix, if you're not under the table, okay. If you weren't paid off. Then my point is, if you were being legit, the purpose is what? To protect a fighter's life, right? To save their life. If so, so so that would be the purpose. But the problem is Lawson wasn't in any real danger. So I say before a fight starts, the fighter and his team has to understand what's best for him and his health. So let's say, for example, Errol Spence and Crawford fights. Errol Spence's eyes start getting swollen. Well, if a referee is aware, yeah, I I I know that, you know, Spence had the detached retina surgery and cataract surgery all in the same eye. Um, so I stopped the fight because the eye was swollen up. Now, what if the eye is not swollen shut? How Joe Joyce's eye was when he fought Zay, right? Let's say he it's the, but but it's bruised up. And he stops the fight and say, I just wanted to save his eye. See, the fact that this man made a decision to go into the ring, 
it's still going to be a conflict because why? Look, man, I came in here, cleared the fight, I'm ready. Okay, it's my eye. I understand what you're trying to do, but I can still see. I haven't even lost vision. And see, this is the point I'm saying. When you make a decision, like, and you stop a fight too soon, that's tricky. Okay, as far as the ref's judgment go in the sense of if it's about, damn, if he take one hard punch to that eye, it could be over for him. So my point is, if that's the case, even referees can protest. I'm pretty sure they have meetings. And, hey, listen, man, if a guy is medically cleared to fight, but he's coming into the ring and he has something, you know, that's still that's there that it can be exploited and, and that injury can reoccur, right? They shouldn't even let the fight happen. They should make it where the fighter, you know, let's, in other words, we're trying to bring awareness to where these fighters are and the best possible hands to where the doctors are not clearing them, okay? Unless they are absolutely, you know, as close to 100% as possible to go. Not bringing a lingering injury that can cause, you know, some det you know, detriment to their health in the long run. So that being said, do you really think that things would change? I doubt it, very seriously. Look, just do your job. We can't control that. I understand your concern, but if they're medically cleared, then call the fight the way you're supposed to call it. That's what I'm pretty sure they'll tell them. So, now, you know, just saying. So, if all injuries don't necessarily happen in the ring. You know, look at Anthony Joshua. Everybody said the same thing. AJ didn't look right. Then all of a sudden, we hear that he got concussed by Joey DeWaco from Sarafina. Never heard it from AJ. Never heard it from her. Nobody in his corner. Okay? So, you know, things happen. Things happen. Um, you know, and listen, people, people can't, you know, it's not about knocking what facts and truth is. The thing is, we don't necessarily always have the knowledge to what facts and truth is. Now, I will say this. If you can tell me that a man blinking his eyes when he take a helmet off his head and saying that his costume wore his legs out, he had difficulties in the dressing room, you know, because his, you know, his water was poisoned, but his chest came back clean. If you can sit here and believe all of that, if you can sit here and support the point of someone accusing someone of not having padding in their glove, if you can accuse someone of having an egg weight in their glove, if you can accuse someone of all of those things and say that, no, it, it's facts, even though there's no proof of it, but you can clearly look at a fighter and see this guy doesn't look like himself, but because of fanboyism, you want to overlook it. That's all fine. What's real is what's real. And I'm not here to make excuses and say, well, this is the only reason he lost. I don't know. I only know what I'm seeing with Spence, what he's saying. And like I said, even at 100%, Spence was going to have to be different, meaning he could be at full strength, his health, everything's intact. But like I said, Crawford is just going to have to be Crawford. Spence is going to have to be different because he can't fight Crawford just that one way. And I said before, I don't know that Spence really has that type of IQ to understand exactly what he needs to do because Spence is the type of guy that likes to bang. And pretty much if you hit him, he wants to hit you back. And so there's times, like I said, he gets a little careless on defense and get hit by shots, you know, that he shouldn't get hit with just for being overzealous on landing a shot. Right? So, yeah, I'm not here to make excuses for nobody. Shit does happen. Okay? We always hear people say that, and they agree that, yeah, fighters are injured all the time, but then when the fighters say they were injured, oh, you're making excuses. No. No. Okay? I'm saying... You know, some of you accept silly ass, you know, excuses why as to why I fight a loss versus something that actually makes sense. And I dare any one of you, though, to go get cataract surgery on your eye and let's see how comfortable you are getting punched in it again. So just saying, um, that's a decision Spence has to make. And that's solely up to him. You know, if he decides to retire, hey, man, like I said, you had a great career. And there's no sense to have that one fight too many and then sitting there telling yourself, 
I should have never, ever, I just shouldn't have took that fight. Simple. Because now you're sitting there with one eye and no telling what else may go wrong. You know, this is the hurt business, man. Nobody's in here to play games. And I just think that um, no matter what people say anyway, you know, what the truth, the truth is the truth. Whether we know what the truth is or not, whether we know all the details or not, common sense is something that we all should be able to have. But once you take that fight, whatever consequences come behind it, it happens. And then you have people that's going to feel like, well, what if he goes in there and all of a sudden he, he, he ends up beating Crawford this time? He's not getting hit with those shots. He, he's being, you know, more defensively sound. But let's say he's hurting Crawford now. He's a better version. Yeah, it's possible. Okay? Both ways are possible. Both ways are possible. But at the same time, his health afterwards, you know, like I said, Terry Norris at 28 years old. I remember the doctor was saying that Terry Norris came to the back after the fight, and they were back there congratulating him, and hey, man, great fight, and that his speech was slurred. He had to actually start taking therapy classes, to, you know, and it, at 28. At 28. So it's safe to say he could have been advised, yo, Terry, listen, you, you, you need to stop fighting now because what happened to you, can have long-term effect, especially if you have another fight where you're getting hit like that again. You know, let's look at Riddick Bowe. Riddick Bowe, by the time he was 28, he was done. Too many beatings, too, too, just too much. You know, um, Derek Chisora took a lot of pounding, but Derek Chisora still talked well. You know, everybody don't have the same fortune. So we can't look and like, like imagine if somebody was saying, well, look at Derek Chisora. So he still, that, that's Derek Chisora. There's a lot, you know, you you look at certain fighters, like look at people say, well, Ali didn't get hit that much. Well, apparently he got hit enough, right? So you don't know what type of effect that this sport, the wear and tear, is going to be on you. So just saying, like I said, you know, in closing, that's something that Errol Spence has to think about. And yeah, I mean, if a fighter is medically cleared, that should mean that they're medically cleared, they're ready to go. But if a fighter is cleared, and the referee is concerned about his health, then it's like, well, you're putting the referee in the position of having that on on his or her conscience that I should have stopped that fight, right? You don't want a real live Apollo Creed situation. And as we know, fighters die in the ring. You know, people don't care depending on how popular you are. That's what it comes down to with people, you know, and that's wrong, dead wrong. A life is a life. Popularity has nothing to do with it, Okay. So, now you've seen, you know, I've given you this information. I don't know if you guys have seen the footage, but it's just a short clip. That's all. It's just Errol Spence looking at the camera and, you you know, like he's being pushed around in a wheelchair. But um, it's probably like 15 seconds long. And, you know, you hear the few words that he say. Um, you know, like I said. It's health versus wealth. And pretty much you already got plenty of money. But we'll see what happens. Tell me what y'all think in the comment section. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people. And I will catch y'all on the next video.